Good afternoon, my fellow treasure hunters. Um, this afternoon I'm going to introduce the Jesse James Cash video um, and project that I've been working on. Uh, I recently went to a Jesse James Cash site, an area where there are glyphs, um, petroglyphs or glyphs that were left by Jesse James and some of his outlaw friends. Whether they're from the KGC or just part of Jesse's group, uh, I'm not positive. If you have any comments, ideas, or, or information about some of the signatures that are on this um, site, uh, please put in the comments down below and uh, to help with our, our research if you have any information. Um, I would actually have gone back to this site by now, but on my last trip my truck broke down. And uh, I'm not sure if it's a problem with the fuel pump or a plugged fuel filter, but it seems like it's not getting any fuel. Anyway, uh, once I get that fixed, I'm going to definitely go back and finish excavating this site and see if there's anything in the bottom of the hole. Um, I didn't have adequate tools last time. I had a small shovel and a, a little tiny hand pick and the shovel tip broke off two or three different times. Um, the area that I was working in is heavily mineralized and so I was getting a bunch of different readings with my metal detector. Um, when I got home I did some um, research to find out about this new detector that I've got. It's an Equinox 800. It's very sensitive and I was getting some interference from either electronics or possibly my phone. The next time I go out I'm going to put it in airplane mode so that I don't get any feedback from my cell phone. Anyway, a uh, pretty exciting adventure. I was getting some pretty good hits down in the hole, but I just couldn't get the big rocks out of the way that were preventing me from getting to where the signals were coming from. Anyway, look at the information and my discussion here with my friend Dan Lowe, and determine what you think is, if this is a Jesse James site, and if I'm on the right track. Okay, I was in the process of putting this Jesse James video together and I saw that I didn't pre-qualify a little bit of information here. Uh, on one of our trips into the field, I located a unusual shaped rock that looked like a half, like a half skull. In front of that rock was a big dead tree that looked kind of like the KGC symbol of the eagle with the three heads. Very curious. I walked around behind the rock and there were, was a pile of rocks in a crevice between some big rocks that looked like they had been placed in there. They didn't have lichen on there. Some of them didn't have lichen like the other rocks. Some, they were too big to have washed in there naturally and so to me it looked like a cache site. I didn't have time to do any searching or metal detect that. I didn't have my metal detector with me at the time. And so I left and haven't been back until this recent trip. And I metal detected it, got some pretty good hits. And so I started to excavate the area. Anyway, just to pre-qualify this. Um, and then this is going to go into our earlier trip and discussion into this site. I don't want to tell anybody that. Why? Because it's it's a new theory. <laughs> let's, tell, let's talk about but, it. But anyway, so two of his most dedicated people were Sioux Indians. Okay. And it doesn't matter what source you look at as far as Jesse goes, he, it's well known that he knew several of the various tribes' languages. Okay, well, well we're, we're talking about writings on the rocks attributed to... You could, there's no question that they're identical to the, the Ojibwa Sioux glyphs, okay? okay? Well, every one of these glyph sites that have been found so far, with one exception, 
you'll find them near a mining area and a railroad. Okay? <laughs> in other words, he had, there had to have been a reason to be in the area. Well, you've heard of the Navajo coat, coat talkers. Yeah, but... Well, why wouldn't they have something like that in the Civil War? Yeah. And it could be the outlaw coat talkers. I can put Jesse James, according to one source, in every location where these mystery glyphs are found. Yeah, I know he was in Utah. Uh -oh. See what happens when I talk? They go out. <laughs> Too windy. No, they just go out. But anyway, and there, there's a lot more to it. The railroad's about 50 miles to the west. And here it's maybe 20 miles. Yeah. But there is a railroad. There is mining out here. It just seems a little strange to find Jesse James and Frank James signature on rocks here. <laughs> now, the guys that found them, did they recognize them for what they were? No, they don't know what it is. Okay, so the guy that told them about it, they still don't know what it is? No. Nope. You know, I, I told him that if you want to, you can tell him that it's probably KGC related, and he yeah. probably won't know that what that is, so just tell him it's a uh, possible Confederate underground. Yeah. Well, it's a pretty good theory. It's as good as any as I've ever heard. Yeah. Now what, according to legend, or what happened, how was he killed? Well, if I know. <laughs> I never pay much attention. Oh, how was he killed? Yeah. <laughs> Supposedly, he was shot in the back by one of his friends. Garrett? Or whatever. Yeah, uh, uh, Bob Ford. Or Bob Ford. And yet we have, we've got pretty clear evidence that uh, Jesse James funded Bob Ford in a saloon in Las Vegas and possibly one in Colorado. If you go look at the history, You'll find out Bob Ford was running a saloon in Colorado, and I think you can actually find one that he was running in uh, Las Vegas also. Where'd he get the money for it? Yeah. And how did this, I don't know, this book author, 1975, how did he come up with so many accurate possible events in 1975? The book's actually quite incredible. It's difficult to believe. And I, I discovered right off the bat that, you know, there's a lot of incredible claims in here. I'm going to have to uh, dig into each one as we go. And with few exceptions, I find that almost every claim in there is plausible. Now, uh, my question is, if he was killed, if... if Okay, the legend is he was killed. Is is there any record of where he was buried? Any kind of burial records? Of uh, yeah, on the grave was, side or something. I think there was a a time where they actually went and dug up the grave, and it's not him. Uh, that's what I. That's the kind of stuff that I'm curious about. Is because mostly, usually those outlaws, if they were killed well, it wasn't, in an old western town, there was a historical record of where they're buried. It wasn't so much all the stories in the book that I dove into and tried to find some kind of evidence to show that it might be true. Yeah. It was all the affidavits that you never heard about. Uh, when it hit the news, they yeah. didn't talk about all the affidavits of people that knew him. Well, it could just be lighting. A lot of times the lighting is different.
All these rocks are piled in here. Right, Dan just found Jesse's last bottle. It's old. They must have thought they were going to die, so that's why they put their names on the rock. Cork the old bottle and... Now well, we're looking for an old Jesse James hideout. I haven't seen any anything yet like what we're looking for. Look at your hiding here, though. Well, here's some wood from an old campfire. I'm sure they lots of hideouts in here for Jesse James or anybody. Alright, I got a rock, rock piles I've been following here. There's another one. I'm going to follow them out here for a minute and see where they go. Where they go. Okay, I'm up in here where I'm seeing some stumps and stuff cut up. These are old, old, old cuttings. Some outlaws or something back up in here. Trappers or something. Once Dan got me back up to speed on Jesse James, I, I kept trying to switch to Butch Cassidy, the old Utah outlaw, the Utah outlaw that was born in um, Circleville, Utah. We drive past his family home all the time when we're going down Highway 89. And so Dan got me back up to speed on the Jesse James story and, and I after being at the site and did a little bit of research and figured out how everything everything fitted together here. Anyway, it was a real interesting uh, trip. We found some really neat things. Uh, I found a good spot that I felt like could have been an outlaw hideout, a good campsite. I got thinking about that cache site and of course I went back and, and checked it out. Anyway, here's some pictures of the the glyphs which were found in a second trip to the area once we had better information on their location.